Hi, myself Dr. Vivek Shashindran. So today we would be talking about complications of ear surgery. So when I talk about complications of ear surgery, uh, we should know one thing that every surgery has its share of complications. However, when we talk about complications, the incidence of complications is very uh, minimal as far as ear surgery is concerned. So today I would be touching upon complications of tympanoplasty. So if you have seen my earlier videos, uh, tympanoplasty is a surgical procedure where you kind of reconstruct or repair a perforation in the eardrum or the tympanic membrane. Now, this is a fairly simple and a straightforward procedure. So it involves uh, reconstructing the perforation or repairing the tympanic membrane with a material which has almost a similar consistency as that of the tympanic membrane. And this is what we refer to as the fascia or the temporalis fascia. So this is usually harvested from the site around the ear and the tympanic membrane is reconstructed. Now once the tympanic membrane is reconstructed, now more than 90% of these would take up without any issues. However, in a small subset of patients, I would say that probably the graft uptake may fail. So the patient can have a residual perforation or some part of the perforation does not heal. So for example, you say there's a large perforation more than 90% of the perforation closes up, whereas in a small part, there is still a residual perforation persisting. Or you can have another scenario. Now that could be because of an infection. Or you can have another scenario where the graft has taken up, the perforation is closed, and few years down the lane, the patient again has recurrence of symptoms. So now this could be because of some faulty habits. It could be probably a reinfection, or it could be because of the use of you know certain things to probe the ear, like. Uh, Q-tips, cotton buds, uh, slides, pins, pens and all kinds of things are used by patients to clean up the ear. Now you could have issues with the incision site. So most of these are usually done through the area behind the ear or in front of the ear. Now what happens with the incision site is sometimes if the incision site is not kept clean, there can be infection around the incision site. Rarely there could be in the immediate post-operative period, there could be collection of blood behind the incision. Now, these are minor complications that are related with tympanoplasty. Now, the reason why we do a tympanoplasty is to kind of close up a perforation or repair a perforation so that it heals well. And the second situation is to kind of improve the hearing levels. In some patients, what happens is that during the primary surgery time, we kind of discover that the ossicles or the bones that are responsible for the hearing are damaged. If the damage is confined to one or two bones, most of the times we will be able to kind of reconstruct the hearing mechanism. But at times, all the ossicles can be involved and the patient may have very poor hearing. So in those situations, we may not be able to guarantee a kind of hearing improvement, just like what you would see in a patient who has normal ossicular chain or the ossicles intact. So in some subset of patients, we kind of reconstruct the tympanic membrane in the primary sitting and subsequently for improving the hearing in a second stage, we take up the patient for a surgery so as to hear, improve the hearing levels. Now if the patient has re-perforations or if the graft uptake fails, we always have the option of revising the tympanoplasty or if there is a residual perforation, that particular area can be grafted again. So in generally, tympanoplasty is a safe procedure which does not have too many complications. But you need to keep in mind that the incidence of complications are very few and we do come across these situations occasionally. Thank you for watching.